For a really long period of time, people have been enthusiastic about the idea of Chai-Fi. High performance products coming straight from China, but having good price performance ratio, having a good build quality and being sold straight from China means that there is less of a middleman, so less branding and more value in your pockets. Today's video is exploring the SMS Al DO200 Mark II. This is sold and fulfilled by Aoshida Store, one of the best stores from which you can grab some of those audiophile products. Now, this is a DAC for desktop. It is a balanced DAC. It has an output that is either balanced in XLR formats or LCA formats, and it has a multitude of inputs. It has an AES or EBU input. It has an I2S input. It has coaxial, USB, and optical inputs. It needs a kettle power plug having the power delivery built in, and it consumes very little power while in standby and even while working. It is about 5 watts of power, being just a duck. It doesn't have a headphone amplifier, it doesn't have other complex functions. All of that being said, it does have Bluetooth and LDAC as inputs, so it is pretty much the dream of anyone who has a hi-fi system and who doesn't want to invest in one of those hi-fi ducks published and promoted by European companies. Usually those cost much more than the SMSL DO200 Mark II. Speaking of price, this is priced at 469 US dollars. It is priced lower than the Mark I of the SMSL DO200 series and they didn't upgrade the last. So this is a Mark II. There has been a Mark I of the same series, but they are very similar. If you are looking for huge upgrades, there are none to be found here. What they upgraded was mainly the display, and that is the only thing that you should expect to have changed. Everything else is basically the same. They have the same audio circuits, same ducts. If you already have the Mark I, there is literally no reason to upgrade to the Mark II. If you don't have one of those, and if you want to get yourself an SMSL DO200, there are many reasons to get one. Re reviewing it gave me some insight to how it actually sounds and to the fact that I actually should appreciate it a bit more. One of the advantages or strong points of DO200 Mark II is that it has a preamplifier, so you can adjust the volume using the remote or using the volume wheel here. You can select between the inputs and it has some filtering settings too. Baseline sound will always be the same and having a variable volume is a good thing because it can be used with active speakers that do not have an embedded volume. For example, I was just playing with some AirPods A300, it is a new speaker, and I was actually considering purchasing them for my own play. I love the KLH Model 5 and I will probably be using them side by side, so I wanted to experiment with another pair of speakers. The A300 from AirPulse only has volume for the A300, but the Pro version doesn't have volume if you use an external DAC. And they sound quite a bit better when driven by the DO200 Mark II, so it is useful in that situation. It is useful to give volume control to an active speaker that doesn't have volume control. It would be just as useful if you got something like the Adama Audio T7V which doesn't really have volume control either. You would have to use the volume from something like the DO200 Mark II. The general tuning and the overall signature of the DO200 Mark II is generally very natural, pretty flat. It doesn't have a lot of emphasizes on the bass or on the treble or on the mid-range. It has a very linear sound with a very good soundstage, very good instrument separation and outstanding resolution and detail. It is one of the most resolute DACs you can purchase for about 500 US dollars. You can really feel that you are investing in a high-end DAC. It sounds beautiful. It has outstanding resolution, detail and clarity. I would say that it is one of the best options you can grab at that price point. I like the overall design, to be honest, it works quite well. I could not notice any kind of delay when using it via the USB input or the optical input, so it is flawless. You can watch movies, play competitive games, you can do pretty much everything that you are supposed to do using a DAC. The interesting part is that you can have multiple inputs connected at the same time and you can select between them. So you can have your computer connected via the USB input, you can have an external optical device like a TV or like a receiver and you can have the, an I2S based device. Although usually those are streamers. Most of you guys are big fans of streamers and most of my videos and especially the written reviews have a lot of views on streamers. So I will try to review more streamers as well so that I can <laughs> give you something fun to talk about and something fun to watch. The Duo 200 Mark II is not an upgrade from the original. It is just a retweak of the original. I think that the Mark II moniker is just giving it 
the ability to exist. It's not like they changed anything in reality. They just changed the display and it was the same and the original was very good. And this one is cheaper. So if you can grab it, I think that it is a better deal than the original. It still holds its place very well in the market. There wasn't anything released in the past like six months. The original was not very old either. They are both provided by Aoshida, which is one of the best stores in the world. If you want to grab yourself a dock or an amp or a headphone amplifier or headphones or players, everything really. Our Shida store is a big competitor in the Chi-Fi market. They sometimes are even better than in Seoul, especially when it comes to SMSR products and other expensive products. Our Shida is better for expensive products, while in Seoul are basically kings when it comes to entry-level products like EMs, in-ear monitors, earphones, Chi-Fi, stuff that is affordable. But for stuff that is more serious, like especially SMSR products, I always try to go for our Shida. I recommend you do so as well. They are great. Some of their products and actually most of their products are available on Amazon too. So if you are not comfortable with ordering from a foreign website you haven't used ever before, you can grab them from Amazon. And I'll be honest with you, I'm personally uncomfortable paying on any website out there. So I have ordered the Zune Weebill 3 gimbal stabilizer and I was not comfortable ordering it from the official Zune store. I just wasn't comfortable even though it is their product and it is their store. So I went ahead and grabbed this from Toman, which works well for me in Romania. Amazon also works well, but they didn't have it in store at the moment. And that is why I would recommend you to check out both Aoshida. And if you are not comfortable introducing your card data in the Aoshida store, go for Amazon. They are the ones selling on Amazon and they will provide just as good of a service. I think that the DO200 is an interesting <laughs> tweak of the original. It is not an update in any way, it is just a tweak. But the sound is still great. I think that it is one of the most detailed DAX that you can purchase in the sub 500 US dollars price range. It has superb build quality, full metallic casing, no noise that I could discern. And even when using something like the Hyphenman EF400, I could notice sometimes some noise coming from it. But from this one, no. The the O200 Mark II is silent. For example, when moving the cursor and having the volume at the maximum, I can hear a very faint, but very well-defined sound happening with the EF400 from Hyphenman, especially on the DAC output. So on the headphone output, you can never hear that. But on the DAC output, I could hear it. With the O200 Mark II, I never hear that. So it is perfect as a DAC, perfectly silent, very detailed, very dynamic, actually, very good sound. Here we have a setup that has no volume control on the DAC. This is the GDS Labs L Stack L Stack 2 Plus Balanced. So the name is quite a bit of a handful, but let me tell you something. I always imagined that the L Stack is like someone with a Mexican hat and L Stack, but no, it's like Element Stack. It comes from this being the Element series. Now the DAC from the L Stack doesn't have volume control. It is always running at 100% volume. The amp on the other hand has volume control and you can use it to control the volume. This is important because first off, you need to purchase both. You cannot use the DAC only because it doesn't have volume control. Second, I think that it sounds a bit better if you use them together. Other amplifiers, although they do have volume control, can run into some volume problems. For example, the sound will be quite loud and quite overdriven if using a DAC that has no volume control. That is a rare occurrence, but it does happen sometimes. I do think that using these together is better. But if you have a hi-fi only setup, something like the DO200 is better because this one doesn't need any additional devices. You can purchase it and you can use it for your speaker setup. The L stuck from the back is actually better if you have headphones and EMs and if you are planning on using those. If you are just planning on purchasing a DAC, then the SMS Audio 200 Mark II is a better choice. It is simpler to use. It has a remote, while the GDS stack doesn't have a remote. And yeah, that one is made for a desk, while this one can be embedded in a complex setup or beneath your television, for example. Since it has both optical and USB input, you can place it beneath a television or beneath a monitor like I have in the back, and you can use it that way. I hope that my video also had very good enjoyment for you. I hope you'll consider subscribing to Audiophile Heaven. Also, don't forget to check out my other videos. I hope you have a lovely weekend there, and I hope we'll see each other really soon. Bye-bye.